Become a Leslie's Pro member, and with almost a thousand locations conveniently located less than three miles from your service route, you can quickly get in and out and take care of your customers. Get Skimmer, America's number one pool service software platform. Listeners of the podcast can try Skimmer for free. Visit my website, swimmingpoollearning.com, and click on the Leslie's Pro and the Skimmer banners to learn more. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Yeah! Hey, welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to go over some ways to make sure you get paid for your work. This is a difficulty in any business and especially in the service business, where there's not a lot of recourse when you're not getting your payment on time or when you're not getting your payment at all. So I'll go over some tips here to kind of get people online and to get paid when you need to get paid. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. I think it boils down to personality. And this is something that if you've been doing business for a long time, you kind of know these personality traits exist and it's something that you just have to deal with. There's a percentage of people that pay early, I would say 10%. Then about 80% of the people pay on time. And then you have about 10% that just pay late all the time. And that's just their personality. It's something to deal with. In reality, the pool service is pretty low on the totem pole of payments. Of course, you have the mortgage payment, then the car payment, then any kind of credit card bills food, utilities, everything else kind of goes in front of the pool service. In fact, I think even the gardener or landscaper is a priority over the pool service, unfortunately. That's just how it is. And I think you have to realize that since you're so low on the totem pole, when you message a customer saying, hey, you didn't pay last month, can you make the payment when you get a chance? That message is really not heard as loud and clear as you want it to be. You assume that they're paying attention to the message or responding to it. But in reality, a lot of people just have you off the radar, especially in the off season. This is something you have to understand. And you're going to have that percentage of customers that just don't pay on time. And how do you motivate motivate them to pay on time? Well, there's there are certain ways you can do it. You can, of course, get them on a direct deposit where every month they'll pay you can also try sending them a square invoice. I found this to be really effective for customers that just can't get around to writing a check or doing the direct deposit through their bank. So if you have a billing app, if you're using software, you definitely want to find a way to get them to pay using their credit card, which is usually easy for people. So square is, in my opinion, the easiest one to use. They do charge a percentage. You may want to add that to the cost in the service, or you can just absorb that cost and be thankful that you got paid at least for that month of service. How far can you, should you go before you stop service? I would say the 60-day mark would be the furthest I would go. I've gone past that before, and it's one of those things where if you do pass 60 days and you get to 90 days, it's hard for the customer to catch back up. Plus, there's some confusion in how much they owe. The months kind of get blurred together. They'll question if they paid you for the month prior. And it gets really out of hand at that point. So anything past 60 days, you just stop servicing the pool. That usually gets their attention. They'll call you when the pool starts turning. And then you can go back there and, of course, charge them for recovery of the pool if you do want to keep that account. Now, it's something that to consider is what do you do when they're not paying and they're consistently late all the time. I would say that customer would be on the short list because you don't really want to deal with someone who's always paying late. Occasionally, that's fine, but every month or month in and month out, again, it leads to confusion of you know how much is due, especially if you're charging for filter cleaning or the kind of chemicals during the beginning of the season and they don't pay that balance. You just push it forward and the customer will question the large bill. And again, it's hard for them to catch up because there's really not a lot of extra money and households nowadays with the rising cost of everything and inflation. 
I know that the media says inflation is at 2%, but if you've gone anywhere, you know that's not really the reality. And that inflation number is kind of worked in favor of keeping it low. The real inflation number is actually much higher if they actually include certain things that they don't include in that inflation number that they put out there for the public. So things are expensive, and when people fall behind, it's really hard to catch back up. Sending text reminders or email reminders is all you can do at that point. And again, when you reach that certain point where you want to cut them off, some people do it in 30 days. You can, depending on the customer, if it's a newer customer, yes, maybe you just want to stop after them being late for a month. If they're a customer that you've been servicing for a while, I would give them a little more grace and go a little further. But once you get past that point, you're actually doing a lot of free service. I mean, if you go a month, you're doing four free stops. If you go two months, you're doing eight free stops, which does add up to a lot of time and lost money for you, especially if they never pay that money and you just lose that money. Another problem you may have is collecting money when you install something or when you're doing a green pool cleanup. Now, this gets kind of, you know, you don't know that they don't know you sometimes when they call you to hire you. You don't know them. And there's something to be said about trust that kind of has evaporated in the market. But there is a level of trust that's necessary when you have a service provider coming out for the first time. That being you yourself coming out there, to, let's say do a green pool cleanup and you quote the customer $700 is a pretty bad green pool. And a lot of that is your chemical cost up front. So there's really nothing wrong with charging them a a fee at the beginning to cover your cost at least so that you can at least recoup that if for some reason they don't pay the balance of the bill, which has happened before. And you want to charge them a percentage, you know, 30% down. So if it's $700, I think it would be fine for most people to pay $210 to get started on the green pool cleanup. It's a fair amount. And of course, you're going to start right away when they pay you. I, I would suggest getting a square account so that you can charge them on the spot. It's probably the easiest thing. I have a square terminal, which is really handy, but you may not need to go that far. You may just want to get a little Dougal for your cell phone or tablet that you can swipe their card. If they write you a check, the nice thing is a lot of banks like Bank of America, which I use, you can just take a photo of the check and put it in right away. And that's also almost the same as cash now. And of course, cash would be great as well. The point is to collect that money before you start the project. You can be standing in the driveway while they pay you. I mean, it's not something that's unheard of and it's something that's acceptable with a lot of vendors. So that's not something that you should shy away from or be embarrassed about. You just want to get your deposit. Some may charge more and you may want to give them another bill halfway through the green pool. Let's say that you have it at milky blue at this point. You've cleaned the filter twice. And it's almost finished, so send them another bill for 30 more percent. And then you can bill them the final percentage at the end. This is what a lot of vendors do. They don't necessarily take the full payment up front. It's understandable that there's a level of trust that doesn't exist yet. But taking partial payments is really critical. I would definitely avoid using PayPal. PayPal is notorious for allowing the person to reverse the charges. I would not use PayPal friends and family. A lot of people want to avoid the fees and they'll send you money through friends and family on PayPal, but there's no protection at all in that area and very little protection when someone reverses the charge or refuses the charge saying that it was not a legitimate charge. I've had members of my group lose up to $1,000 or more through PayPal when someone paid them and then they said that they never did the work and PayPal reversed the charges on them. So PayPal would be one I would shy away from. I've heard Square can do this, but it's much harder. It's just like if you were to call your credit card company and try to get a charge reverse. It's not that easy. They would want you to contact the merchant first and then go through that step. So it's not something that is readily, easily done, I should say, through Square. But PayPal is a lot easier to do that. And of course, you can take Venmo. That's a pretty safe way to get money. And my favorite is Zelle. Zelle is basically just a cash transaction, they'll Zelle to your account, and there's no fees associated with Zelle. So if they use Zelle, even better, they can, they can of course, Zelle you the partial deposit, and you can collect that money. But Square is also a safe way to do it. A lot of customers prefer using their credit card over their bank account, and it just depends on the customer, 
how they want to pay you that deposit. And the same goes for equipment install. If you're putting in a pump and motor or a filter, you want to get a partial payment, at least the cost of the equipment, before you start the install. And it's fair to do that. A lot of times if you don't do this, and of course if they're your regular customer, there's probably no need to do this if you've been servicing their pool for a year or two. I don't do this. I just bill them after I'm finished the entire amount. But if it's someone that you just called you from your Google Ads campaign or some other way they reached you, maybe you have a sign on your truck or a wrap on your truck, you would want to get a deposit for the equipment, the cost of the equipment, because once you install it, you really can't go back there and remove it. Now, I know a lot of pool guys will say, if they don't pay me, I'm going to cut the equipment out. But that's actually not legal. Once the product is installed, it's the customer's product, whether they paid you or not for it. And they can actually probably call the police on you in some cases. And it's, you know, you're actually stealing something off their property at that point. The police don't know if they paid for it or not. It's one of those things where, what are you going to say to the officer? And it's something that you shouldn't do. So you need to collect the money for that before you do that. I know many pool guys in my group have that have installed equipment, like a VS pump. They didn't get paid for it. And it's very frustrating, you know, trying to build a customer, sending reminders. So as long as you get paid for at least the wholesale cost of that equipment, you just lose that on the install and that's perfectly fine. And I'm making it sound like people are going to stiff you left and right. It's not the case, but you should always be cautious. And if you wanted to bill someone after the project is done, if you think you can trust them, then you can do that as well. I just think the level of trust should be with some compensation between the vendor, which is you, and the customer, because you are going out of your way to do a project, picking up the, the supplies at the supplier, bringing it there and doing the project, that there should be some money changing hands at that point. Not all the time, but if you want to be safe, then sorry. I think most of the time that should be the way you operate your business. I used this example before, but I had a general contractor that he moved out of the area, he moved to Arizona, but he was a good friend of mine. We went to church together. We were in the same men's group for like 10 years. He did a lot of general contracting work for me. And no matter what I had him do, he'd always send me an invoice for 30% for the down payment for the work that he was going to do. And it's one of those things where that's just how he operated with everybody. It didn't matter if you knew the person for 15 years or 20 years. They always got that invoice first. And that's just a way to protect your business and protect you from getting stiff later on. There's really not a lot of recourse on your end if you install, let's say you install a filter and the customer doesn't pay you the twelve or $1,400. What can you do at that point? Well, you can maybe take them to small claims court, which is a hassle and is something that, of course, if you even get the judgment, collecting on that is a problem as well. People say, well, put a lien on their house. Well, that's good, but... You really can't do that unless you're a general contractor in California. And in most states, the lien is not enforceable unless you actually go to court before a judge and get the lien recorded, which doesn't happen very often. And again, you have to be a general contractor to do that. And if you do happen to be a general contractor and do get the lien recorded, it really doesn't do you any good anyway, because unless they refinance the house or sell the house, you're never going to get paid that money. And it's one of those dead accounts and maybe 15 years down the road, you're going to get a check for the amount when they sell their house or if they refinance it five years down the road, they'll clear that lien off the property. You can't force a foreclosure. You really, you know, over $1,200, that's not going to happen. The judge is not going to do that. And it's one of those things where there's not much recourse if you don't get paid for something. You can go to small claims court. You can kind of hound the customer, but that's about as far as you can go. If you are a little bit too aggressive, They'll probably leave you a bad review on Yelp or Google, and then your business will suffer. And it's kind of like a, you know, twisting the knife in you at that point. But it has been done before. I've seen that happen to people that complain too much. In fact, the person I mentioned that had the PayPal charge reversed, he complained to the person about the person. She actually was a realtor in that particular state. And it became really messy because then she left him a really bad review on his site. He left a bad review on her site. And it just became a war of bad reviews. So you don't want to get to that level. The best way to avoid that is to find a way to collect the money through Zelle or Square, somewhere safe, and collect a portion of the money or half the money up front. So I would take some time 
this week to review your policies on collecting money. Review your late policies. It's weird, but in California, a late fee is really not legal in anything. It's one of those things. It's state by state. So if you want to charge a late fee, it may not be enforceable in your state. So if you have a good, solid policy, you can avoid a lot of headaches down the road and you can avoid a lot of negative account balances or non-paid accounts or closed accounts that have a balance by just being diligent on your end and really extending trust as far as you're comfortable with. And then, of course, you would want to extend that trust even further when you get a partial payment at that point for whatever job you're doing at that customer's property. If you're looking for other podcasts I've recorded, you can find those on my website, swimmingpoollearning.com. Just click on the podcast icon and there'll be a drop down menu of 1500 podcasts for you there. And if you're interested in the coaching program that I offer, you can learn more at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great week. God bless. Real quick, if you're not using pool service software, try Skimmer free for 30 days at getskimmer backslash poolguy. Again, that's getskimmer backslash poolguy. Skimmer, everything you need to run your pool service business all in one app.